Recovering from tragedy, El Paso in mourning this morning after a gunman packed with ammo opened fire inside a Walmart, leaving 20 innocent people dead and 26 others hurt. The suspect behind the rampage is behind bars, but the FBI says that doesn't mean the community should let their guard down. Our Christian Flores live at the scene where the tragedy unfolded. And Christian, the feds say everyone still needs to be aware of their surroundings. Well, the FBI released a statement earlier expressing concern over the possibility of copycats in the wake of this shooting, as well as the one up in Dayton, Ohio. They're really urging everyone at home, if you see anything suspicious, to go ahead and report that. Meanwhile, back here on scene, this memorial in front of the entrance of the Walmart parking lot has grown significantly overnight. Mourners have been trickling in and out of this scene all night long and into the morning, just emotional out here. Next to this memorial, police officers are still blocking off the crime scene. Those police cars, as well as the candle lights that are lighting up this El Paso sky, has both served as painful reminders of what happened here, as well as how much healing is left. We never thought it would happen in El Paso. As people here in El Paso learn the names of the victims. This is tragedy. The tragedy continues to strike closer to home. We can feel it. Every, it's empty everywhere you go. It's not the same uh, El Paso. This mourner says a distant relative is one of the 20 dead at the Walmart. She did not want to share anything else, just that everyone is hurting now. It is sad. Uh, yesterday that I was watching the news, it hits me just by the words. Ralph Propek says his stepson was about to buy milk for his newborn child at the Walmart when he heard the chorus of gunfire. He was about to go into the Walmart when he started seeing the people laying on, on, outside the, the Walmart. They started hearing gunshots. Sunday, El Pasoans flocked to the Walmart parking lot entrance, leaving behind flowers. Senator John Cornyn paid his respects and condemned the shooter's potential racist motivations as investigators continue to look at his past. To see somebody try to uh, start a war uh, between our cultures is simply unacceptable. We're not going to let him get away with it. Now, those in mourning are doing what they can to cope with tragedy. Oh, it's going to take a long time, just a lot of prayer and faith. And after visiting this memorial, Senator Cornyn says he will begin discussions with lawmakers on both sides of the aisle over what changes need to be made for the federal background checks. They began these discussions after the Sutherland Springs shooting, and he vows to bring this back up again. Reporting live in El Paso, Christian Flores, CBS Austin this morning. After the heavy rain, city officials are assessing their campsite cleanup efforts along waterways. Just Friday, Watershed Protection released a list of 20 homeless encampment sites in waterways and tunnels they planned on cleaning up. It was pretty extensive throughout Central Texas. CBS Austin's Christian Flores is live at one cleanup site tonight. Crews were able to clear out the tunnels ahead of the storm. Christian? We haven't seen anyone camped out here all day today, and we were actually at this very tunnel underneath Riverside exactly two weeks ago. I want to show you what it looked like then. You could see it was clogged with bicycles, boxes, other personal possessions, but today it's completely cleaned out. City officials want to keep it that way to prevent flooding. Less than 20 minutes, it'll get pretty bad. Austinites know how quickly trickles of water can turn into flooded creeks. It causes a, a lot of trouble getting out in the morning with floods. But this week, Austin Watershed Protection felt more assured than normal after campsite cleanups across 20 waterways and tunnels over the past two weeks. Before these cleanups, tunnels would be jam-packed with items causing a flooding risk. Now they're cleared out as crews took out five tons of materials. That right in and of itself is a benefit to uh, water quality and also to the, uh, reduce the flood risk that's present at these locations. It was very impressive to see how they, how they cleaned it up so quickly. I mean, I'm glad they do because for it to be clogged up like that, that's pretty, pretty bad. It can cause a lot of damage. As part of a $250,000 contract with the city, new campsites may be added as Watershed Protection learns of more campsites. The goal? minimize flooding and improve public safety. This is not a safe place to be. And, and if there is a uh, abundance of trash, debris, uh, what, uh, possessions uh, that, that could be entangled uh, in, a, in a flood event, then that, that's the message you want to get. As for those living in these encampments, the city and watershed protection want to direct them to housing services so they don't return to these dangerous living conditions. That is the ultimate goal of what the city strategy is, is to get uh, individuals without homes housed. 
and watershed protections contract with the city does not specify how many campsites they need to clean out, which actually leaves them flexible to add locations as needed. They are evaluating a few sites to possibly add, but they have not added any to that original list of 20. Reporting live in South Austin, Christian Flores, CBS Austin News. We do have team coverage tonight. CBS Austin's Tristan Balagtas is live downtown after following those protesters to the Capitol. But first, CBS Austin's Christian Flores is live in front of APD headquarters where thousands of protesters started off. Christian, what's the situation like now? Well, we've been in front of APD headquarters since about 1130 this morning, hours later, several hours later. You can see, still see there's a sizable crowd out here, though. A large number of protesters did march west toward the Capitol. But you can see that APD headquarters right now is being uh, guarded by state troopers and riot gear, as well as a uh, number of APD officers on bicycle. I'm going to have our photojournalist, Jason Rivera, zoom out to show you this light pole on the corner of 8th Street and the I-35 service. Where you can see some charring over there. That happened when a couple protesters did light a flag flag on fire. Shortly after that, however, that's when protesters crossed the I-35 service road. They marched up this ramp to get onto I-35. That was the first time this afternoon they, get, they got onto I-35. They're no longer there right now, but you can still see APD officers uh, and uh, state troopers are guarding I-35 to keep protesters off. I'm going to show you some video we got throughout the day because this is a, a trend that happened numerous times throughout the day where protesters would get up close to I-35. Uh, officers and, and protesters would get face to face and then officers who are armed with batons and uh, rubber pellet guns would either uh, hit protesters with batons or spray pepper spray or fire multiple rounds of those rubber pellets and did see uh, uh, at least one protester with a pretty big welt from one of those rubber pellets. Now, uh, Governor Abbott did deploy 1,500 state troopers to assist AI, APD uh, in today's uh, response. Uh, this is the first of two protests this weekend. Tomorrow, there's also going to be a protest scheduled in front of the state capitol. Now, obviously, protesters here have the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis and police custody in mind. But they're also here, as you mentioned, for Mike Ramos, who was killed uh, in, by a Austin police officer and an officer involved shooting a little more than a month ago in a southeast Austin apartment complex parking lot. We're going to go ahead and let you listen in to what protesters had to say about these protests today. Now we're seeing people on video, we're seeing people being captured. How many of these happened before when there was no one around? That's what I worry about. A lot of people are getting murdered because police officers are scared. Don't be scared. Just learn how to do your job properly. And again, this is the first of two protests this weekend. We were here last night uh, where, uh, again, protesters did gather out here in front of APD headquarters. Now, last night, and actually there was a little, it was a little more active, a little more activity up until about 2.30 this afternoon when uh, protesters and officers did get face-to-face -face right by I-35. Last night, we did see multiple times where officers who were guarding APD headquarters actually had to advance and push protesters uh, back before they themselves retreated. We saw that, and, and up until about 2, 2.30, we did uh, uh, see a little less activity, and then 2.30 hit, and then for several different, in several different instances, we did see uh, officers firing those uh, rubber pellet guns and spraying pepper spray to get protesters to back off and to stay off of I-35, which has since reopened in both lanes uh, at last check. Now, we also have comment from Brenda Ramos, Mike Ramos's mother. She uh, sent out a statement asking protesters, pleading with protesters to keep today peaceful and not to take part in any violence in her son's name's sake. Uh, we're obviously going to be following along with this all night long. As soon as we get any more information or get any, any more developments, we'll be sure to keep you updated both on air and on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, and on Line at cbsaustin.com. For now, reporting live at ABD headquarters, Christian Flores, CBS Austin News. Family of a woman hit and killed by a Metro Rail train filed a lawsuit today. They claim the city of Austin, Cap Metro, and others contributed to her death. CBS Austin's Christian Flores is near the Plaza Satilio Rail Station where Erica Finley died two years ago. Now, what does her family say, Christian, makes this spot so dangerous? According to the lawsuit, Finley was walking along this gravel area that's pretty narrow next to these tracks. The lawsuit also points to the lack of a horn on the train the night she was hit, as well as the city not providing the proper sidewalks, the only sidewalk being across the street. Hello. 
people walk around here. It'd be very dangerous at times. Near the Plaza Saltillo station, <laughs> neighbors know they have to be alert when they hear the Metro Rail train when on their daily walk. I had to be cautious of where I walk on what op on what side of the road, but it's been like that for some time. Neighbors say the lack of sidewalks, the obvious non pedestrian pathway on this other side of the tracks is a problem in many parts of the city, but especially near Plaza Saltillo, where new apartment complexes have sprouted in recent years. How do they prioritize that as they continue to allow permitting and the infrastructure to grow as rapidly? There's not really any options for this side of the road. I mean, there's a sidewalk on the other side, but there's a whole gate. Can't even get over there. The city of Austin could not comment on this lawsuit, but they did say they are still working on sidewalk projects as part of the 2016 sidewalk master plan. The problem, it could cost $40 million per year to achieve their goal, but they only have enough money to spend 15 to 20 million per year. At this particular section of East 5th, the only sidewalk is across the road because developers are only required to build sidewalks within the limits of their project. Neighbors say more money needs to come in to allow the city to appropriately build in lockstep with the rapid growth. Safe areas for people to travel without cars, I think is important. How do they prioritize safety versus growth, right? So I'm not, sh I'm not sure how they, they figure that out, but it's probably something they might want to reconsider when they start allowing growth to happen as rapidly. Last year, Austin built nearly 14 miles of new sidewalk, including a stretch of East 5th to the east of where we're standing. Finley's family is looking for more than $1 million in damages for her death. Reporting live in East Austin, Christian Flores, CBS Austin News. City Council members met today after a dangerous fire at an elaborate underground homeless camp. City Council members told CBS Austin's Christian Flores this is a wake-up call. Well, just standing up here along this busy road, it's very easy to miss this massive underground homeless campsite. Last night, watershed protection officials say they're going to start monitoring the area, but today advocates and city leaders say the fire just highlights the fact that more city and state resources are needed to be devoted to the homeless population that often goes unseen and unheard. Yeah, we were down there. The homeless camp that caught fire off 183 and Cameron Road is the size of three football fields, leaving Austin fire crews facing dangerous debris fighting the fire. Propane tanks in it, uh, other combustible things, drug paraphernalia and needles we have to worry about. Homeless advocates like Front Steps Executive Director Greg McCormick gathered at City Hall and said this fire shows just how much further the city and state need to go to help the homeless community. What more does the city or even state need to do to make sure that we do properly address some of these hidden communities? Yeah, I think it's a reminder to us that there are people out there who are homeless who are in places that are that can be really dangerous. It's going to take some bigger steps. Uh, we've got to get people into places where they can make better decisions. Uh, shelters are good for that. I don't really have a choice. I mean, I can't really work like this in this amount of pain and like I can't really do anything else with no ID and social. We reached out to the offices of council members. Natasha Harper Madison responded saying the size of this encampment is a wake up call and the city needs to continue providing basic services to those living on the street. At Tuesday's work session, council discussed converting the old Health South facility into a temporary shelter. That undertaking would cost anywhere between 2.5 and 6.6 .6 million dollars and take two to two and a half years. If we're going to do that, that's great, but let's do something now to get people off the streets, out of these encampments, into a shelter, into some type of living facility where they can uh, get healthier. Governor Greg Abbott, who has been critical of Austin's homeless policies, has been noticeably silent on social media about this fire. His spokesman did reach out to us and tell us that Austin's failure to handle this homeless problem actually has put the safety of those who are and are not homeless at risk. Reporting live in Northeast Austin, Christian Flores, CBS Austin News.